Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you a screw that can be screwed in the clockwise direction or the counterclockwise direction. Either way works. Now even though we use screws every day, they're actually pretty interesting. They're one of the six basic simple machines. What's cool about a screw is that first it takes rotational motion and turns it into linear motion. So you turn the screw, but it moves linearly. But that's not all that these simple machines can do. The coolest thing about them is that like the other simple machines, they amplify the force that you put on them. For example, have you ever wondered why if I take a screw like this and I just try to push on it, I can't push it into this wood at all as hard as I push barely goes in. But if I take that same screw and just turn it a little bit, it easily goes into the wood. So much that I can actually just screw right through the wood. So isn't that interesting that just with a little bit of force of twisting, I was able to get the screw to go completely through the wood even more than I could get when I was pushing on it with all my might and I couldn't get it to go into the wood at all. So why does this happen? The reason this happens is because I was spreading out my effort, the amount of effort I had to put into doing something over a larger distance. And so I was allowing heavy loads to be overcome with a smaller amount of force. For example, the mechanical advantage of a screw it's just the force that you put into it divided by the force that you put get out of it. And you can actually calculate this pretty easily. All you do is take pi times the diameter of the screw divided by the lead. The lead in the screw, for example, is just the distance between two adjacent threads. So let's say I had a screw that was a half an inch in diameter and then the lead was 0.1 inches. That means I'd get a mechanical advantage of 15. 15.7. But what's interesting, if I can make those leads even smaller, like let's say I made them 0 0.01 inches instead, then suddenly I get a mechanical advantage of 157, so 10 times the amount. So the smaller you can make this lead, the more mechanical advantage you get. So when you need to move things that are really heavy, that's why you have screws that have finer threads on them. So usually for a screw or a bolt, the angle of incline is in a specific direction depending on which way you want to turn the screw in order to move it. But what's really cool is I found a screw that I could 3D print that has actually made the threads that can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Watch what happens when I screw this in the counterclockwise direction. It goes down and gets tightened. Now I unscrew it in the clockwise direction. Let's screw this one in the clockwise direction. Now I'm not unscrewing it, I'm screwing it in. But now to unscrew it, I screw it in the counterclockwise direction. You can also see the same thing when you put these nuts on here. So watch how I'm screwing this one on this way. And then put this one on and I have to screw it the other way. So I can't screw them both at the same time. So how this works is it's basically a normal screw in which you've cut slots so that you can have threads going in one direction and the other direction. And then depending on what type of nut you use, how the threading is on the nut, you can either screw the bolt in one direction or the other direction. So if you look at these two here, you can see how the threads go in one direction on one of them, and then in the other one they go the opposite direction. So there's not two possible ways to thread it with one single nut here. So you can see that with this one, I'm gonna have to turn it in this direction to go down. 
because that's the way the threads are angled. But with this one, I have to turn it the opposite direction to go down. So if you look at the nuts here, you can see, so if you look at these two nuts here, <laughs> can't even see. so if you look at these nuts, <laughs> these nuts, <laughs> can't even say this. I'll put the STL file for this 3D print if you want to check it out in the description. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did and you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing and also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section. And also check out theactionlab.com if you haven't seen it yet. You can get the Action Lab experiment boxes or my experiment book as well. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.